I was honored to be asked to design a swatch. I was like, yes, because to me, I was just waiting. I was kind of waiting. I was waiting to have the opportunity to do something like this. I mean, I'm not stupid. I know that they, they do these amazing collaborations with artists and designers, and I've collected them myself over the years. I wanted to design a watch that didn't actually have hands on it. You know, you wouldn't say one o'clock, you'd say moustache o'clock. And then you'd get to a certain point and it would say kind of like no o'clock. And, you know, I wanted to make a little dictionary saying, here's another way of looking at time when you don't know how to read a watch. The truth is, I love wearing watches because I can't read them. I'm dyslexic and I can't actually read the time. So to me, they're just like nice objects with nice textures of textiles. If you're designing a precious object that's made out of leathers and precious metals and stuff like that, that's sold within the confines of a quiet, focused space with lots of expensive upholstery, sure, you design a different kind of object, but this is not one of those. It's a watch made of plastic. To me, plastic is just as interesting as gold. In fact, actually, there's a lot more flexibility and a lot more potential in the uses and the different types of plastic than there are in gold, especially when you want to start making it into shapes and colors. So the thing is, plastic's been really devalued. And in order to make a thing that's made out of plastic feel special, it's not the 1940s anymore. We're not looking at really precious, glamorous acetates. We're looking at, you know, plastics all around us. It's kind of like, it's, it's just, we're choking in it. So it takes a lot of consideration to make it feel special. And, and, um, and that to me was a really nice part of the challenge. I get a phone call eight, eight months ago, and he says, what do you think about designing a watch. Seriously? With who? <laughs> and of course, Swatch was, is the dream watch company to be, as a designer, to be working with. Um, you can do so much. It's a blank canvas that you wrap around your wrist. And then I thought, what, what, what would I want wrapped around my wrist? You know, we designed 12 different watches for this. Actually, 15. Um, there was one called the, the Bang Bang watch, there was one called the Boom watch, there was one called the Dot Face, there was one called Moustache Face, there was a, a, so many different ones. There was one called, you know, the Cocteau, because it was based on a little Cocteau story, Jean Cocteau story. There was tons of them. This one actually just worked uh, because, in a way, it was the most identifiable, the one that had such a, a very solid, recognisable graphic. You know what watch you're wearing from about 10 meters off, 5 meters off, which is, takes a lot in order to do that. You all freaked out over one, and it was this tribal world that you wanted to delve into. And I thought, why not? It's brilliant. It's colorful, it's textured, and it has meaning. My sister and I, it's me, we, we work together and we draw together. And actually we started in this very apartment. It didn't look like this. It looked like some kind of like strange apart from, from the 1970s with a sofa that had been here probably since the 40s and had as much DNA in it as it did style. Uh, and I used to sit and, and write songs and, and then it came to the point where I felt like I was ready. And I was ready to get my music out there. I had been sending out demos for years, and it was always one failed attempt after another of getting people to listen. So finally, I was like, you know what? I'm going to present myself as this complete thing. I'm going to present myself as a complete artist with a visual identity. And the first step was actually figuring out how to present my music. I didn't want to just send out a blank envelope with my name and a picture. I didn't like the way I looked in pictures, so I was like, maybe I could do it with drawings. And from that point on, music and illustration and design were, went hand in hand.
when I, I approach any project, um, and whether it's like designing a new show or a new record cover, clothes, whatever, I mean, I always try and think of a story. And it was very simple. It was this totem pole watch thing lands on uh, an alien planet. Two boys find amongst the leaves this very colorful pillar. They run up and they, they discover this, this scary thing that's just landed in their world. And at first they don't know what it is and they're afraid of it. And then of course they go through the next stage where they're completely in awe of it, which leads to them worshipping it. This kind of watch totem pole thing. And then it doesn't give them what they want. So they get really angry with it and they chop it down and turn it into firewood. And then the, the life continues without any change. And the last thing that's left is, is, you know, is the watch that we've made, which is the, the relic of this kind of totem pole. That's how it all started. That was the totem pole, and that was eventually the watch that would wrap around your wrist. It was fun. I don't come from a design background, um, and which is probably why I have so much fun designing stuff. And that's why I love collaborating with people as well. So we have, in, in our team, over the past seven years, we've worked with everything from uh, set designers, costume designers, to scenic painters, to trompe painters, to uh, sculptors like Aaron, to, you know, I don't know, inlay workers. We just, we, we all, we're always looking for people to add to our team that we can call upon and, and, and bring to life all these ideas. Working with Aaron Disler on these masks, I had a very specific idea. It was just like, let's figure out a way to, to kind of make these African-inspired, but, you know, kind of not typically African or typically tribal masks that, that incorporate the watch in some way. The masks that we're making with Aaron aren't just boxes that open up. They're kind of things to kind of intrigue you or to interact with or to look around. What we were trying to do was actually make the watch feel even more magical or mystical or kind of add to those kind of mysterious attributes around the watch. So we're in a way, we're framing, we're presenting the watch. The actual design, the, the, the patterns are a mixture of North African designs that you find in Morocco or Tunisia, uh, and also the mixture of, of tribal mask heads, but you can't quite pinpoint what kind of, what, what tribe would have done, is it a French Polynesian tribe, is it a kind of, you know, African, I don't really know, it doesn't really matter because they, all those tribal heads have the same kind of function. They're there to inspire that kind of curiosity and awe. I wanted something that felt really considered. I wanted something that felt total. Like a really good sandwich. Like a really good cake. When you bite into a really good cake and all the parts of it really add up. From the way it looks, to the way it smells, to all the different layers. That's when you know something's good. Whether it's a picture, a drawing, you know, a song, it all has to have that. It has to feel really total. See, there we go. It works, I think. It's up to you guys to decide. <laughs>